So this is what the pilot sees on the Sea Searcher sonar display. What he's watching is he's seeing all of, from here, this is the ocean floor, and we're looking down below the ocean floor, and you can see little objects here, and there's an object there that we can see that's sort of slanted up toward the surface. So we can select that object here, and we can three-dimensionally rotate it around. We can measure it. It tells us the latitude, longitude, depth of the object in inches. So that's how the Sea Searcher is able to 3D image. The easiest thing for the user to do is to see from the ocean floor down to the bottom, down, down below. Right here, they're going down to about 12 feet below the ocean floor, but we can actually go down to about 30 feet below the ocean floor. So as you can tell in this image also, right here is the speed of sound in salt water off Melbourne Beach, 1,531 meters per second. Why that's important is if that speed of sound is not correct, the image gets fuzzy because as the array sensor is looking and trying to locate objects, if it doesn't know the speed of sound and the speed of the reflections, then it, it diffuses or makes the object look fuzzy. So we have to precisely know the speed of sound off in the water off Melbourne Beach and it actually changes depending on the temperature of the water and the salinity of the water. Now Melbourne Beach salinity doesn't change, but the temperature does. So we change that throughout the year. So the graphs here on the bottom show the likelihood there's an object below the surface. Um, so this graph here, you'll, you'll be able to tell as, a, as an object comes up close, the probability there's an object below the surface increases. There's a metric that we use here that determines its hardness and, the dent and how big that object is to determine whether or not we're going to notify the user that there might be a target there. There are literally, obviously, there's literally millions and millions of she shells and other small objects below the ocean surface. We call those uh, point reflectors. So if you're flying along, a seashell can look suspiciously like an object, but we have to filter that out so that we're only really reporting true three-dimensional objects below the ocean floor. So all of these points here where the sea searcher is moving around, all of the uh, gray-coated dots are where the algorithm determined there is likely a sub-bottom object. The blue ones are weaker in the fact that they may be there. The gray ones are more significant. So we can actually select each one of those. It'll tell us the location, the depth, the hardness, the size of the object. And then we can actually send a diver to that location to perform a test excavation. There's a couple of reasons why the Sea Searcher exists and is used. One is it changes the economics of looking for sunken uh, shipwrecks. The other techniques require multiple sensors, multiple passes, and a lot of effort, and the Sea Searcher changes that economics. The second thing is in any archaeological activities, and, and people would like to think that if you think there's a shipwreck there, you can go start digging, and it really doesn't matter whether it's state waters or federal waters. The archaeologist in charge of those activities at the state and federal level are not going to let you just go start digging for artifacts. You must do a certain amount of remote sensing, sonar, sub-bottom profiling, magnetometer surveys, so that you understand what item is there, what uh, potential is there, and to not, without care, destroy that shipwreck. So part of what we do is absolutely economic-based, and part of what we do is also because the industry demands that remote sensing be done before you start excavating. One of the key tenets of uh, underwater archaeology is you don't just start digging uh, right off the bat. Um, you really want to do what they call remote sensing. And remote sensing involves sonar, it involves magnetometer surveys, it involves um, uh, metal detection or metal discrimination as we call it. It involves a, a set of techniques that allows you to better understand what's below the ocean floor before you start digging or in the case of some folks using 
using mailboxes and blowers. Um, so our approach in the Sea Searcher is to put pretty much all of those sensors on one platform so that we make one pass over the shipwreck, collect all of the data, and can come back with our uh, GPS corrected locations and tell divers exactly where to go. The next time, we're gonna talk about the metal discrimination and how that interacts with the sonar in order to produce a high confidence view of what's below the ocean floor.